introducing the concept of framework dowsing. I'll be providing um, ideas and suggestions so that you can achieve clarity, confidence um, and a high level of information coming through via your dowsing. I'd like to start by giving some acknowledgements and that is that most dowsers are self-taught. Uh, we pick up information and learn information as, as we go along and I'm not trying to change the way that you do your dowsing process, I'm trying to introduce some ideas that might, that might improve your dowsing and the confidence that you have in it. I feel that it's a good idea to work on your dowsing while, whilst you're not actually in the dowsing process. So that might be working with your question structures so that they, they tie in firmly with, with the frameworks that you might pull together. Another idea is to spend time with somebody who's dowsing and observe how they're working also. So I'd like to start by just giving a really quick introduction to or an overview of, of my dowsing experiences over the years. I learnt to douse from my sister uh, when I was about 20 and we were working with uh, vitamins, food supplements and the shoes, the tissue salts. Later I brought in the batch flower remedies. But my dowsing process tended to feel like this. It was quite useful to be working with the vitamins because they had numbers and the shoes, the tissue, or rather they had letters and the shoes, the tissue salts had the numbers. But very often I felt that I was picking up information that, that didn't feel clear or it wasn't, it was as though I was trying to fit together the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. And as you can see here, I've got jigsaw puzzles that, pieces that aren't from the same puzzle. And it was when I was working, actually holding my hands over the remedies or, or um, over my travelling case of shoes, the tissue salts, that I felt a lot more confident. It was about 1988 when I began working with a radionic practitioner. And she'd have what would I would call the first sort of framework that I'd come across. My dancing began to feel more like this. Some of these pieces were missing, but each piece of information had its own place and I knew where to look or go to as I was, as different areas of, were being highlighted. So it began to feel more like this. It wasn't until I met um, somebody who's become a dear friend to me now um, that I started using what I'd learnt and putting more information into it. So what I'd like to do is show you a diagram of what I call a map or mat framework. Each area represents a different area of um, information or information that's been gathered together because it's related to it, to other pieces of information. And by holding my hand over the different sections of, of my analysis sheet, I can then get an indication of where I next need to go to find the information that I'm looking for. I'm not going to talk about these two areas of the framework, um, just to keep things a bit more simple. So each section of the framework represents an area, as I've just said, um, and I'm always starting top right and moving anti-clockwise around the analysis sheet. So the blue section, or it isn't blue on my analysis sheet, but it makes it a little bit clearer, is to do with the conditions which might come up when I'm treating a patient or target. The pink section is, loca is associated with locations. So they can are generally physiological locations, or they can be related to a place, um, agricultural work that I might be doing, an animal or a patient. 
the green section is uh, the cosmic and planetary forces and rays, and the yellow section is specific remedies um, or frequencies that I'm using to treat um, or, or prescribe for somebody. So now my framework tends to feel much more like this. I'm taken to which of the drawers in this the filing system I'm going to be drawn to. And for example, we're going to look at this one because this, this area, the specific remedies and frequencies, is very often where a lot of our students begin by creating their frameworks. So if I'm taken to this area of my framework, I'm then opening that out and looking at the choices that I have within here. So, um, so carrying on with the example, I'm going to, uh, for the purpose of this talk, say that I've been drawn to, to, or it's been indicated by the pendulum that I need to look in this area of the framework. And we'll, we're going to presume that um, a flower essence has been indicated. So I will then go to my list of flower essences, which have been divided into different areas of the world. And that, again, with a presumption, we're going to say that the European flower essences have been indicated. Uh, there's a, actually a laminate for, for the, this list, and it's taken from um, Claire Harvey's new Encyclopedia of Flower Remedy. So, say so we're talking the European one. We've got a list here of the European flower essences. Um, and so let, let's presume that the pendulum has then picked up that it's the batch flower remedies that need to be um, looked at in more detail. On the website you'll find uh, the batch flower remedies um, in a download form and they've been coloured, highlighted and bracketed so that you can use different ways of finding the specific remedy or remedies that are indicated for your target. Right, that is uh, a very brief overview, but within these frameworks you can see that we're using areas, areas of a sheet where, which are then being taken to uh, new frameworks or, or books, or, and then within those frameworks we use, some people are using letters of the alphabet, so we may be doubting for, does this remedy begin with a letter of the alphabet from A to M? Enter Q. You'll see that on the download that you can make. Or some people are using colour coding. Uh, other people are using brackets, which they're, they're putting in within their frameworks. You, it's really helpful to be using techniques that are going to save you time within your dousing process. So some of the benefits that I feel is that the divergence and convergence. You end up with a large almost infinite number of possibilities that, that you're looking for a specific remedy or item which needs treatment for the target or patient that you're treating. So it enables this to come in much more easily. When you've brought in your honed, memorised question structures which tie in neatly with your framework, you get control of the ego you're letting go of emotional connections that you may have or presumptions that you may have from the symptoms that have been provided and you're much more likely to get accurate results. And there's also this demarcation between yourself and the subject that you're trying to get the information about. You don't want um, for example, I had a patient um, where I was picking up their symptoms 
physically within my body, I don't want that information coming in and affecting the dancing process. I want it to be clear and focused and letting go of, 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 of emotional connections. Some things I haven't talked about, I haven't gone into how you would prescribe those remedies, um, how many drops, how much water you're putting in, how many days treatment, how many times a day they're taken. I haven't looked at statements and requests that are pre-dousing ones, and I haven't gone into the question structures, I'm just trying to give you an overview. I haven't talked about the subtle bodies and aspects, or the treatments that we would, that I would personally do. Um, using the multi-treat radionic instru uh, computer instrument um, for, for distance healing. Right, we do have uh, a free e-book on the website. Um, uh, please fo follow the links on screen. Uh, it is free. We're, have a go at mind dumping and i um, love to hear your feedback on Facebook. There's more videos on YouTube. I hope you found it useful. Um, and yeah, yes, so if you could give us any feedback, that would be lovely. Thank you.